If your industry is a competitive one, then remember that your target market wants to make sure that you are providing them with valuable information and not just generic stuff. That's why today we're talking about six ways that you can minimize the fluff in your videos. Let's jump right into it. If you're new here, my name is Liz and I release videos every Tuesday teaching you how you can add video to your business. Don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss any of my future content. Now, why is this even a topic, minimizing fluff in your videos? It's actually a really big problem nowadays. Many people get on video and then they fill that video with all sorts of generic terminology and concepts that are not really valuable for the audience. And then they feel satisfied that they put out a video. Consider the fact that your ideal client will watch that and think that it was an utter waste of time. And then immediately they will go and look up your competitors. So I want you to be the one in your niche that is showing up with really tactical, strategic, value-packed information. When your ideal client sees that, they should feel like every single word that they heard from you was something that is going to impact them or help them. So let's talk about the six ways that you can minimize adding all of this fluffy hocus pocus stuff into your videos that's not going to help anyone at all. Let's jump right into it. The first way to minimize fluff in your videos is to always plan your content in advance and plan it strategically. That means you should have a proper outline before you actually shoot any type of long form video, especially if you're doing a quick 15 second story where you're just kind of showing up to say hi to your audience or to share a thought with them, then you don't have to do a lot of scripting out or any outlining. You can just have a point ready and then come with it. But if it's a video that's at least 60 seconds long, don't just wing it. Sometimes I work with clients who are actually really strong public speakers in real life. They are used to just standing up in front of people in real life and just winging it. They just have a topic and then they can talk for 20 minutes about it. The problem is that same skill doesn't translate the same way on video every time. On video, if you think that you might have a tendency to ramble, especially, or if you're new to video and you want to actually get started the right way, it's important to note all of the actual points of your video. Make sure that they are in a clear order, not an order that's going to actually add more confusion for your client. Make sure that all of the points are actually valuable. Are those points that the client wants to hear or are they points that you think are the problems and the pain points? So do that sufficient research so that every single point of your video is something that is going to be impactful to the viewer. This will really help you to stay focused, stay on track and then avoid going on and on and on, adding in extra unnecessary points and having a lot of fluff. The second way that you can minimize fluff in your videos is to get to the point as fast as you can. Sometimes we watch videos where the person actually takes a long time to set the context or to give an introduction. Remember that a lot of the time your viewer is just going to scrub past that. If you are setting context in about 45 seconds, then that's usually okay because the viewer will at least appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to explain to them why this topic is even important before you dive into the rest of the video. But anything longer than that is going to frustrate them and make them feel like you are just wasting their time. So spend that time to prepare the opening hook of your video so that you can say it concisely without rambling. Prepare that little bit of context setting or that short introduction and then just get right into it. The third way to minimize fluff in your videos is to edit ruthlessly. Now, when you are editing, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to create a fast paced type of video, like what we might see on TikTok or like some promotional videos that we might see. However, when you are watching back your raw footage, if you find that you have repeated some points in one place and then again in another place, or if something that you've said is a little bit redundant, or if something that you've said isn't actually on your outline, it was just something that came to your mind all of a sudden and you said it, but it doesn't actually really impact the client. Any long pauses, any times where you are actually rambling a little bit, those are all things that you can edit out. Now, believe me, as a video marketer, it is so painful to take the effort and time to shoot a video and then to edit areas and press discard on it and get rid of it. It really hurts the heart to throw out any of our work. But remember, adding that stuff in is actually going to bury us. It is going to cause that viewer to feel like we didn't even take the effort to make sure that the video doesn't have all sorts of repetitive stuff and unnecessary pieces there. So don't let that backfire on you. 
Just put the ego aside and be willing to toss the things that are not valuable in that video so that it only has the information that your viewer would want to see in accordance with the title and the topic that you have picked for it. Now we're interrupting this video so that I can remind you to subscribe. I think you should do that first. And if you are interested in grabbing a free resource where you can actually get started with video even sooner than you expected, be sure to look for it in the description below. Just click on the link and I will send that off to you right away. Now let's get back to our video. The fourth way that you can minimize fluff in your videos is to provide specific examples, stories, and case studies. When you do this, then your viewer gets an opportunity to visualize what it is that you are talking about. They might ask themselves whether this is actually applicable to them, and hopefully a lot of the time it would be. And they can actually see themselves in some of your stories. They might have experienced exactly the same example that you are giving in detail. On the other hand, when you speak very generically about high level concepts, then your viewer has a tendency to kind of disconnect from it because they cannot really understand what is in it for them. How does this apply to them and why should they care about this? Sometimes in an effort to make a short video, I notice that some of my clients like to do this type of high level speak. Instead of doing that, keep a short video, but make it about a specific one or two examples. That is really going to go further to reach your client, make them aware that you are talking about work that you have done and things that you have seen with other people that are actually very similar to some of the mistakes that they might be doing themselves. So this is really going to help them feel like your video is providing value to them. The fifth way to reduce fluff in your videos is to talk about the why. Sometimes we talk about the what, what it is that they have to do, how they have to do it, all of that. But talking about the why actually allows your client to understand the deeper picture behind the big picture. It helps them understand whether this is a problem that they have actually been going through that they didn't even notice. Remember that your viewers are all going to be at different stages. Some of them might be aware of their problems. Others might be aware of their symptoms, but not sure what the actual problem is that is contributing to the symptom. So when you talk about the why and you give them that high level view of why this topic is actually going to be of importance to them, how that is going to change the way that they are doing things, how that is going to help them to get that transformation that they want in the end, then they can start to connect the dots and understand how this is going to be applicable to them. Now, the sixth way to minimize fluff in your videos is to be mindful of your language. Now, we're not talking about using bad words and now I'm trying to discourage you from not doing that. That's your choice. It depends on your video and your audience. I'm talking about using unnecessary words. There are some words and phrases that people have a tendency to say when they are shooting videos and the only reason they do it is because they are trying to buy time while they are thinking of the next thing to say. The viewer can tell. This is always a problem and it makes the viewer feel frustrated because they feel like they've got to sit there and wait until you've collected your thoughts and now you're saying the sentence that they want to hear. For example, what if the thing that I wanted to say was video marketing is going to change the landscape of your promotions in 2024? That would be a good way to say it. Instead, a lot of people would say, I think that video marketing is going to change the landscape of promotions in 2024. Why do I need to say the words, I think that? Your viewer already knows that you think it. That's why you're creating a video on this topic. You don't have to add in that word. That phrase is usually the kiss of death even for live video because your viewer can tell that you are scrambling in the back trying to connect what you are saying to the point that you want to make and you're just filling in the gap with these unnecessary words. So what I would recommend you do is watch back a couple of your latest videos Keep a clear lookout for any of these unnecessary connecting phrases that you might use. I'm talking about these few words that come at the beginning of a sentence or at the end of a sentence that you don't really need. Those are things that you can edit out. If you feel like you have just gotten into a habit of saying all of that, definitely edit it out while you are practicing how to deliver your content without those type of unnecessary generic phrases. So if you like this video, I hope that you would give it a like and share it off with one of your friends. Don't forget to subscribe because every single Tuesday, I bring you a new video teaching you how you can add video to your business. So until next time, take care.